Google's algorithm, you know, works off of AI and it's identifying many things. Like you get a ranking score based off of quality of your content, backlinks that you have on your website, um, the text that you have, your SEO. So if you're able to work alongside an AI and see what it really wants, then I believe it can help you in the long run. So people have to stop fighting it and just work with it. And it can be, it may seem scary, but it's going to, it's, it's already has a big impact on our society. Welcome to Innovation Insights, the podcast where we explore innovation in all aspects of life. I am your host, Dr. Yolanda Sanders. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Jay Calderon. Jay is a seasoned marketing professional with a robust track record in digital marketing, specializing in SEO, social media management, content creation, and website development. Jay holds a Bachelor's of Science in Marketing from Iowa State University's Ivy College of Business. His career is dedicated to boosting online visibility and engagement through strategic digital campaigns with extensive experience crafting tailored marketing strategies for individuals, small businesses, and large corporations. Jay ensures that brands resonate well in the digital space. His expertise is crucial for clients aiming to develop a compelling digital presence and to enhance their online branding and communicate effectively with their target audiences. Jay's commitment to crafting engaging online experiences and his passion for delivering measurable results make him a key asset for any client looking to improve their digital marketing efforts. From his early roles as marketing specialist at Clouds Cafe in Ames, where he led content management and marketing strategies, to his position as marketing and social media coordinator at Milan Laser Hair Removal in Omaha, Nebraska, Jay has consistently demonstrated his ability to execute targeted campaigns and foster meaningful customer connections. He also made significant contributions to the Delta Sigma Phi Fraternities marketing and public relations campaigns, emphasizing community event promotion. So Jay's blend of creative flair and analytical precision enables him to provide actionable insights and innovative solutions that drive growth and contribute significantly to the evolution of digital marketing practices. We are excited to dive into his wealth of knowledge and experience today. Welcome, Jay, to the Innovation Insights Podcast. Thank you, Yolanda, for having me. This is a, a blessing. It's my first podcast, so I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. Well, it'll be great. It'll be great. And I'm just also so thrilled to have you on the Innovation Insights team. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time from your uh, undergraduate days at Iowa State University. And uh, it's been fun to watch you evolve and then just also watch you implement marketing campaigns. You're truly um, talented in that area and thoughtful with your campaign. So I just thrilled to have you on the team and get to work with you. I'm excited. When I was told about the opportunity, I was immediately drawn to it and saw the potential in it. So I'm excited to be a part of it and see the future of innovation. Well, well, thank you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to marketing uh, as a career and specifically digital marketing? I've always been interested in business since a young age. And I'd say since I was about 17, I knew business would be something that I'd want to study when I got to college. When I got to college, I had a little bit of experience creating websites, like on Wix, experience with WordPress a little, and but I never really had implemented them in an actual business. So when I got to college, I was learning about business and had the opportunity to meet a good friend and an amazing mentor where he gave me the opportunity to work with a nonprofit organization and then 
his own small business. And from there, I was able to implement what I had already learned and take it to another level. I realized that digital marketing was where I wanted to go because it just stuck with me. It resonated with me. It was helping something come to life. A business is it's like a dream of some people and marketing can help that dream come to life. So that's the way I view marketing. That's a nice perspective on helping people meet their goals through marketing. Because sometimes marketing is viewed as sometimes sleazy. You're just trying to sell things. <laughs> They're not trying to help people. There are a lot of people that use their strategies in the wrong ways. And sooner than later, it all comes to light. So if you're doing it in an ethical way, you can reap the rewards and the benefits. If you're doing it in a non ethical way, then you will be met with consequences. That makes sense. <laughs> so what are some key uh, milestones or experiences that you've had in your career that has shaped how you approach digital marketing? Yeah. So after college, I went on to work at a corporation, Milan Laser. There I was immersed into a marketing team and I got to see how a marketing team functions. It's all an effort of different teams working interconnectedly. You have the SEO team, you have the creative team, you have the communications team, and all of these teams work together on one mission to get leads, to get sales, and to communicate to the audience what you're trying to get out there. What I learned was the importance of digital marketing and how SEO can have a great impact on a business because SEO is a good way to generate organic traffic to your website. You'd pay for some keyword searching tools, but ultimately if you're able to create a website and it's as excellent SEO optimized into it, then you're going to be generating traffic on a monthly basis based off of just your SEO and no advertisement. So. What I really, that was the milestone for me there was that I realized that I wanted to learn more about SEO and excel in that skill and see where I could take it in my future career. For our audience, would you uh, explain SEO to us? Because some people may not know. SEO stands for search engine optimization. The most recognized search engine is Google, Bing as well. And search engine optimization is just you putting certain keywords, certain phrases into your text on a website so that you're able to rank higher in the search engine results. And that's search engine optimization. That makes sense. So for individuals, is it important to understand SEO? Absolutely. Depending on what role you're playing in your business, if you're having direct contact with the website or direct content with any social media. If you're the one drafting that content, written content that you're using to communicate with your audience, then it's extremely valuable to have SEO, those certain keywords that your business excels in on search engines. So if you're a, a painting company, then your, your keyword would, pro would probably be painting company near me when finding a creative way to incorporate that into your content is what's going to help you increase your ranking in those search engines. So it's extremely valuable in the way that you don't have to pay for it and you get amazing results. That makes sense. But thank you for, yeah, providing those insights. I think that's really helpful for people because Sometimes you hear, oh, I need to focus on my SEO. Or some people might think that it's just for large corporations. But as people build their own personal brands, it seems like that would be something helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So, would you talk a little bit about your education at Iowa State University and how that prepared you for your career? Yeah. My education at Iowa State was valuable. I learned the fundamentals of marketing. I learned the principles of marketing. I feel like I scrapped, scratched the surface of what I was going to learn because I'm more of an experience-based learner. So if you put me in an experience and in a situation, I 
I learned through that situation and experience, but I also pull the knowledge that I've learned from things that I've read or that I've learned in, in class. Um, what I really did get out of Iowa State was the relationships. I, I got to meet a mentor, which is one of my best friends, and he opened my eyes to the realm of business. I was a full-time student at Iowa State, and I was also helping somebody create a business from scratch and seeing it come to life. And still here today, after four years, is an amazing experience. I've gained an emotional attachment to that. Relationships, people are the most important thing. <laughs> well, would you tell us about some of your early work experiences? You mentioned some companies that you worked for, small businesses, helping them start up. Could you talk a little bit about what you learned from those experiences? Yes. In my career, I had the opportunity to work with nonprofit organizations, small businesses, and a large corporation. From each of those, I've learned different things. From the nonprofit, I learned content creation and human behavior, creating content based off of human behavior. What type of content would somebody be most likely to engage with and how to create that content? And then also creating a content calendar. What is the best time to post? When are people most likely to be on their phones? Is it during breakfast, before work? Is it going to be during lunch? So creating content based off of human behavior and then pairing it with the analytical side of, okay, how well did this perform? And then if it performed well, how can we capitalize off of it? And if it didn't perform well, how can you improve it or maybe scrap it? Well, that makes sense. And from what you just said, a couple of things came to mind for me. One is content calendar. Would you talk a little bit about content calendar and how important it is to have a plan? Uh, sometimes people think that you just throw content up on social media at any time and it just happens. <laughs> I think a content calendar is great because it provides you with the peace of mind of knowing when you have to be producing your content and getting it out there. It also allows you to be consistent and consistency is key. The content calendar is amazing. You just have everything laid out for you. You can see what you have to do and you just produce it. So a plan, a plan is good. It's good. <laughs> and it's good. Um, oh, there is something else that you had said too. And I, I should have made a note about it. Um, and it'll come back to you. Oh, yes, the analytics. Thank you. Because analytics, sometimes when I've worked with creators, I will ask, how did such, such a thing perform? And if I didn't look at that, I'm like, eh. Yeah, and I guess being a researcher, maybe personality type, I feel like I have to analyze everything. Uh, so would you just talk about the importance for that? And even if you have your own personal brand, you know, is that important to look at your analytics? Yeah, your analytics tell you everything, right? Data is what tells you if something's working or if it's not working. And that's probably one of the best things that's come out of technology is that you're able to track all this information. You know, you'd put a billboard up and it's very hard to see how it's performing or you can put a radio ad out there and it, it may be a little difficult to see how it's performing. But with the digital space, if you create a post, you can automatically see how many likes you got, but then if you go on the back end, you can see an in-depth view of how your ad or your post is performing. You can see genders, you can see nationalities, you can see location. So it tells you all you need to just better your marketing campaigns in a way as well. And maybe <laughs> because numbers are scary sometimes. But they could be very yeah. helpful. Yeah. <laughs> My father used to say, Quote of the day, always when you heard something, he sell Jay on behalf of Leon Sanders. Quote of the day, numbers can be scary, but <laughs> you just have to get over it because they're important. <laughs> okay. uh, let's talk a little bit more about digital marketing strategy. So what are the critical elements of 
creating a successful digital marketing strategy? Yeah, the critical elements, I would say, know your product and how you're going to communicate it. Tell your story. And the content that you're producing, ultimately, have it be quality content. That content's going to be based off of your product, and it's going to be based off of your story or a story that you're trying to tell. Storytelling. We like storytelling at Innovation Insights. <laughs> you mentioned your work at Milan Laser Removal and the different teams that, was, that you worked in within marketing. How did marketing interface with sales? Because uh, sometimes, too, there's a disconnect between the marketing team and the sales team. At Milan, they had a call center in charge of any calls that would come through our marketing campaigns, advertisements, or website, those calls would be automatically directed to the call center. We didn't work closely with the call center, but we made sure that any campaign that was created or any type of information that came in through those campaigns was specifically included in descriptions through our CRM systems to the call center. So when it came time for them to make or close the sale, they had all the information that they needed and they weren't just getting a call and having to figure out who their customer was. When you're thinking about digital marketing strategies, it, there's it, people, and you've talked about the human aspect and understanding human behavior. There's so many different types of clients. Uh, right. And plus there's individuals that have different behaviors versus corporations and there's cultures within co corporations. So how do you tailor a marketing strategy for different types of clients? Yeah. So one thing that I've learned over 90% of people buy based off of emotion. It's a short percentage of people that buy based off of logic. So. If you're able to incorporate emotion into your marketing strategy, into your marketing campaigns, they'll be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Right. And also marketing your product. There's a lot of competitors and many people have the same product. Many people have the same service. So identifying what's different about your product or service and communicating that is really helpful when creating those marketing campaigns and strategies. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I've made some emotional purchases, a lot of shoes, a lot of emotional shoes. For an individual, if they're thinking about their own brand and, and sometimes people don't want to think about, oh, I'm marketing myself, but Honestly, I feel every day that we are marketing ourselves, we might not want to call it that, but what do you have to think about with your strategy when you are marketing yourself? <laughs> you have to be of service to others. You have to be able to provide a benefit to somebody else. It may seem egotistical in a way. Somebody wants something for themselves, but at the end of the day, it's a relationship where it's like a vice versa effect. You help somebody, you get a great feeling from being able to help somebody. You get something from somebody and you, it's a good feeling because they've helped you as well. That's the fundamental basis of a relationship, you know? So I feel like if you're marketing yourself, be of service to people and find the best ways that your knowledge, your love, your expertise, your skill set can help somebody. See, Identify the value that you can provide to somebody else. And that alone will be what you're going to market. If people think about it that way of how, how are you helping people? What are you bringing? And if you don't communicate that, how do people know? Yeah. That was a rhetorical question. That I didn't expect it. That's <laughs> true. Come on, Jake. How are people supposed to know? Never <laughs> know. Oh, so we talked about SEO. We're going to go back to it because it's so important. SEO, social media management. What are some challenges in these areas and how do you deal with that? For me, the challenge that I faced with social media in every, like when I was working at the nonprofit and even at the large corporation was 
the limited amount of content that we had, such as media, because I feel like media is very important. If you have the static images, if you have photos, if you have videos and you're able to use those on your social channels, those will most of the time have better engagement than just, let's say one of the static, like RT image with just text and colors. So that's one of the challenges that I've faced is if there's no pictures and there's no videos, like how can we create content? Right. And at one point, just having text behind an image, which is a very popular at one point, I feel like from 2010 to 2020, a lot of people had a, a background image of a photo like landscape and there was like motivational words in the front and that performed really well for some time. But I think, you know, that was a trend and that trend ended and you know, you had to find a different way to produce content. So a good example would be at the nonprofit organization, Cafe Zapote that I worked at, we had very limited content. We had no photos, we had no videos, and we had to be resourceful in that way. So we thought of, okay, what can we do to create content based off of just like icons and text and no actual images or, or videos. So we created this newspaper post. It, it looked like a newspaper. It had, it was called El Zapote News. It had the price of a newspaper. It had a short little weather section, it had events that were going on within the organization or at Iowa State and any potential upcoming events. So. That was a, a really creative post that we created and it got like good amounts of engagement. And so I think what you learn from situations where you don't have what you need is you just have to become resourceful. Innovation. Yes. <laughs> well, it is a challenge to create content, find content. Do you think that now videos like videos is the thing that it yeah i'd say videos yeah I, just like the short content under 60 second videos are most likely where you're going to get the most engagement on people want their information quick so if you can say everything you got to say in under 60 seconds you're going to get some engagement in an exciting way so for the academics in our audience an hour-long lecture <laughs> It's not the type of video that folks depends. I can say that because I, I, um, you know, live in that world too. <laughs> but you have to know your audience. If you're posting something online, they want quick. If you're having an event, an organization, a seminar, they want to get the most out of their, their time. Thanks for mentioning that knowing your audience, um, you know, every part of business uses different terms. Sometimes you know, you'll hear the word target market or the audience. We're, we have to find our personas, uh, that innovation insights. And so knowing that audience, if you're a company, but also if you're an individual, if you're deciding to apply at different companies, you need to know that company and think about your digital presence. What are, what are your thoughts on that? And as you're applying for jobs in your digital presence. I feel like for me, when I've done interviews, I've gone into that company's social media. I've gone into their website. What I've done at two of the jobs that I've done is I've brought with me this small portfolio where, with binder where I got it binded and I just went through maybe 10 pages and I screenshotted websites and I had what I liked about it, what I think could be improved. I did that on their social posts. I outlined some key posts, what I liked about it, how it could be improved. Doing that, I got a job at Milan Laser and at, non at the nonprofit organization, Cafe El Zapote. I feel if you're able to go for a step and, and do some research, bring it to your employer provide some valuable insight on top of that, then you're going to stand out amongst the competition. Yeah, so that is a great point. That is a great example of creating a mini portfolio on 
the client or the potential employer that you're interviewing with. Mm-hmm. Really great strategy. <laughs> well, um, okay. SEO, more SEO. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You and I have talked about SEO quite a bit and it's a large part of the life that innovation insights. Okay. Al- algorithms seem to change as, and as I'm doing research, I'll see a YouTube video. The algorithm has changed or the TikTok algorithm has changed. How do you stay up to date with all of these changes in algorithms or do you even bother? I've read books and in these books, they say every time there's an algorithm update, people freak out, especially if you're on Google, you have your SEO connected to it Mm -hmm. and your website connected to Google search console. People freak out. There's an update. How is this going to affect my website? A lot of people do experience like some negative effects, like the the traffic to their website will drop in views and some people Mm -hmm. traffic will increase. Mm-hmm. So I, for me, I believe is just immerse yourself in the industry. If Google, let's say, is going to have an update, they're going to tell you that there's going to be an update. So in that moment, just be highly aware of how that update affected you in mm-hmm. analytic research. So you can do that through your Google search console. You could do that through Google Analytics. If there's an update, see how it affected you. And if it affected you, see how you can fix the problem, why it had a negative impact, if it had a positive impact, capitalize off of it. That, that makes sense. And, and I love that you, you wrapped it back around to looking at your data and, and trying to understand why that's happening. Yeah. yeah. I think the important thing to understand is that if Google is going to make an update or Instagram mm-hmm. or Facebook, they're doing it to make that content accessible to their audience even easier. So mm-hmm. just got to look at it that way. And that just mm-hmm. goes to show that maybe you just have to present your content in a better way or word your content in a better way. So mm-hmm. no, that makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, I also think about it like investing or the stock market too. Did you have to stay the course and if stocks are going up or down and you're just moving your money, you could spend all your time moving money around and uh, drive yourself crazy. And I think with changes in algorithms too, if you're just focusing on that all the time, would you have time to create any quality content? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> or would you go crazy <laughs> or, <laughs> or pull out your know. <laughs> Great. Thank you. That's helpful. That's a, that's a nice thought on that because, uh, you know, if people in our audience that are content creators or influencers uh, run across updates or get messaging that if this is changing, how do you cope with that? Um, cause it's constant. <laughs> I'd say also join a community as well. There's Facebook communities, there's blogs out there. Mm-hmm. Burst yourself in the industry and stay updated along with the mm-hmm. updates. It's like a phone, you know, a fo- every year you have an update on your iPhone, right? And at first you're like, okay, how do I use this? Phone? But because you're, you're a smart phone every day, eventually you get the gist of it. So it's just like that. You just have to immerse yourself. I was la- I'm laughing because I was editing a podcast last week and the platform that I use, every time I'm on it, two or three times within an hour, it'll say, oh, new update. And generally the updates are just really minor. But you don't even notice, you can't tell any difference. So I yeah. oftentimes go ahead and click out if I'm not in the middle of something crucial. Last week I did the update and the small platform and I've been working for 30 or 40 minutes on a, a podcast editing. Then I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even find the buttons or, you know, the, I, I get what you think I need now. Yeah. Uh, 
And then they sent out an announcement. Yeah, we just released this whole deal. I'm like, I know. I was right in the middle of trying to edit. And I, uh, I can't even find my files now. <laughs> Yeah. And you have updates, you have changes, and they're just happening more and faster. You have to get used to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about customer relationship management. Do you want to give some of your thoughts on that? You hear the term CRM out yeah. there? And what are, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, CRM, you have to have some good tools that you're using and that you can stand by. And CRM tools that I've used that I love are Salesforce and review us trackers. Salesforce is a good way to get really intimate with your customer, know everything about them, like why they interacted with your website, why they interacted with a campaign, why they want your product. And you also go through a customer journey with them through your Salesforce account, right? And another one that I really like is Review Us Trackers. Review Us Trackers tracks reviews across Google, Yelp, Facebook. I've used that one personally, and that's a good way to stay on top of any negative reviews that you get on any of those channels and in resolving any complex or issues that you may have. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do companies use CRM a lot? Are they like trying to learn everything that they can about? I'd say, yeah, I'd say, yeah. I mean, Salesforce, I feel, is probably one of the biggest CRM platforms out there. And yeah. the more you know about your customer, the better how to communicate to them, right? And any type of information that you can get on your customer, the better you know how to word your content, uh, what certain people are, are like, what, what's their pain point, right? Like if you can identify a customer's pain point, then you can disclose that to them. And then you can also offer them their, the solution that your product provides. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all you get from communication. Yeah. Thank you for framing it that way, because you know, sometimes people are creeped out. Oh, um, you know, I'm being searched or I'm being analyzed as a customer. Uh, but it's companies are doing it in an ethical manner and trying to find out, you know, how they can help. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and there's, yeah, you have there's regulations. Too. You know, you can't get too deep into people's. You know, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, how do you measure if a digital campaign is successful? Yeah, I mean, for me, I have more experience with websites. So, if I were to measure how well a website is doing, you have the back end of the hosting site. If you weren't to code, your website from scratch, you could use a hosting platform like WordPress or Wix. Mm -hmm. And they have amazing analytical tools in the back ends of their site. So you can see impressions, you can see visitors, th things of that sort, right? Then you also have Google Search Console. Google Search Console allows you to see performance of your website based off of keywords um, and it shows you how these words are performing based off impressions, clicks. So it would be the ways that I, I uh, analyze the performance of a successful website building campaign. And it, would you explain ex impressions? Yeah, so, oh, so impressions are like you use a keyword and then that keyword will put you in a certain um, index spot on Google search engine. And the impression doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a click. The impression just means that you're getting viewed. So impression can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. But I mean, the more, if you're being able to be seen, uh -huh. likely you're going to end up getting a click, right? So. That's how I view impressions. They're good, yeah. but at the same time, it's not like the holy grail. Yeah. It's like you yeah. just viewed 
<laughs> it's some screen time that you're getting. What you really want is the click. Yes, please. <laughs> Clicks are good. And even if you have your own personal website, you want to make sure that you're looking at those analytics, right? And yeah, and see that pe- the right people are seeing it. Yeah, I had, I worked on a small business's website. It's a painting company. And the amount of traction that they were getting was very low. They had almost, probably, I think they were getting like nine impressions daily, maybe one click daily, something like that, very low. And I did a site redesign. They had like maybe seven, six pages. I just brought it down to like maybe two pages. I did a home page, about his page. But on the home page, I included everything that the customer would want to know, like just right there. Like they don't have to go searching throughout the whole website. Just make it, make it apparent, right? So introduction text, pricing, services, and then book online. So they could book a free consultation and then in about us where you could learn a little bit more about the service. In those three pa- pages, I included just basic keywords, just basic keywords that you can get from SEM Rush. And I included them in the text on the website. The next day with just a site redesign, just three pages, minimizing it and including some basic keywords, it jumped from nine impressions to about 800 impressions and the next day from there it jumped from 800 impressions to 3160 impressions something like that so and that basic keywords so if you were to actually like dive into real keywords and like pay for like a keyword searching tool and find like some very good words Mm -hmm. make a good impact on your website Wow. Wow. That's impressive. That is a great example of yeah, helping a client grow in their marketing efforts. And by doing all the things you just you popped about during this podcast. Wow. I want to talk about some trends in digital marketing. We talked, not a little, we talked a lot about SEO and algorithms and things like that. But what, and you know, we've talked a little bit about static images versus videos. I mean, do we all need to be making videos? Do we all need to be on TikTok? I feel like you just have to know your audience, your customer, and, and your product. Yeah. I believe that if you, whatever you create, have it, it work interconnectedly. So one thing that I believe in is that if you can create a website and then you can pair it with your SEO, and then you can also pair it with some tangible marketing materials and have that work interconnectedly. I feel like that would, I've seen it work. And I think if you were to implement that into any other business, it would work as well. By tangible materials, I mean like business cards. Some people have business cards, but Mm -hmm. if you want to do digital business cards, if you want to do physical, it doesn't matter. I I believe they both would work. And then review cards. I feel like reviewers cards are overlooked. And what the reviewers cards would be just a postcard size or even a business card size um, material that has a QR code that directs people directly to leave reviews on Google or Facebook or whatever type of review poster you have, like Yelp. As far as trends, so I, you said trends, and I know you don't want to get into like algorithms and stuff like that. Oh, we can, can. I don't, I don't necessarily believe this is a trend, but I think it's going to stick like long into the future. But AI, I believe is going to be very useful to people, but it may come with challenges for the people that are working, trying to work with it. Well, well. Google's algorithm, you know, works off of AI and it's identifying many things. Like you get a ranking score based off of quality of your content, backlinks that you have on your website, um, the text that you have, your SEO. So if you're able to work alongside AI and see what it really wants, 
then I believe it can help you in the long run. So people have to stop fighting it and just work with it. And it can be, it may seem scary, but it's gonna, it's, it's already has a big impact on our society. It's here. We're not going backwards. Yeah. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad you brought up AI. I really am glad that you brought that up. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely not a trend. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we talked a lot about digital, but you did bring up some physical um, aspects. What do you think about physical marketing? I mean, when someone walks in for a job interview or if they're a small business, when I mean, you walk in for a job interview, should you have a, a paper copy of your resume? Or if you're a small business, I mean, should you still mail out postcards or make print materials? Uh, yeah, I, I've i seen businesses. That, I mean, the last business that I, I worked at, they were they were big with digital marketing, but they never forgot about the physical aspect of it as well. You know, there was always the reviewers cards, there were business cards, physical business cards, and there may be something nostalgic about that as well, that, you know, if it leaves that people are always going to want it. I think there's something special about a physical business card. You know, you have it in your hand and you give it to somebody and it's like an exchange yeah. of some, like an emotion almost, you know? Yeah. Um, will physical marketing materials end? That's hard to say. It depends if people find a creative way to just bring everything to you digitally. Yeah. I think people would do that because it could be you know, more cost effective, the future will tell, but I, I believe that our marketing materials are good things. And well, I think for accessibility wise, I mean, I think, well, yeah, we think that everyone is in a digital world, but there's still a large percentage of the world that's not. And, um, you know, we have different generations now, people are living longer and some of them have no desire to uh, be online. A lot are, and, and then there's just parts of the world too that you know digital access is not um, available. So that is, yeah, yeah. and yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to also put that into consideration that you're not just marketing in America; you're marketing across mm-hmm. the country, all across. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah read this you know some people when they create their websites and they you know they create content and they're they're creating content in another country a lot of the time just leave their content in english you know oh, yeah so yeah. But they, yeah you know you think about culturally how is your content going to be accepted in different countries in which way should you produce your content so important yeah and Oh, and think about AI is, you know, now there's so many platforms that will allow you to translate your, your content into other languages. Hopefully it's doing it correctly. Um, yeah. that's, that's something we've thought about experimenting with still. Yeah. Well, what advice would you give aspiring marketers as they're starting careers in digital marketing or just entering the business world? Mm -hmm. I would say identify your skills. Identify what you're passionate about, whatever industry that is. I mean, marketing is very broad. You know, you have different areas of marketing that you can specialize in. If you can find an area in marketing that you can resonate with your skills, your qualities, and really apply yourself. All you have to do from there is just learn it, immerse yourself into it. And, and I won't say become an expert because I, 
I read this book and it said, you can never really become an expert in something that is always evolving and changing. So I guess be okay with not being an expert as well. I think that is so true because things are changing so quickly. And I'm at the age where people think, and I've been referred to as an expert, and I just laugh because I'm like, well, yeah, I have many years of experiences in areas, but things have changed so much. Just even, you know, this last year, like, no, I'm not an expert in anything. Anything at all. I think that's really a good point because it helps to take some pressure off new professionals too. They're thinking about, oh, I have to go in and know everything. No, there's just no way. So what motivates you to continue to push your boundaries and is there a philosophy or a mantra that guides your professional life? Yeah. What motivates me would be helping people, serving people and getting their vision to come to life. What I've realized in my experience that the most, the times that I feel like I'm providing the most value is when I'm helping people. And my knowledge and my skills in marketing can help people bring their visions, their dreams to life through a business or whatever they decide to sell, whatever type of product they decide to put out there, right? And that's what keeps me motivated. That's what fulfills me. And a mantra that I follow, I would say, don't let fear shy you away from doing something big. Like yeah. that. I like that. Well, both of those, I mean, that's, you know, a reason why I'm so thrilled that we have you on the Innovation Insights team because we are about helping people, but also helping people innovate, which requires that you let go of that fear and you just go ahead and jump in the swimming pool and, and try make that big splash. Our last question that we ask every guest on Innovation Insights is, how do you define innovation? Innovation for me would be doing things differently from what other people have done and sticking to it. A lot of the times you're going to have an idea or you're going to present an idea that's a little bit different from what has been normalized. And if you're able to stick with it and follow through and see positive results from it, then that just goes to show that your innovation in that area is, is genius, you know? I like that. So you can't just merely innovate. You have to have some persistence to and sticking to yeah yeah uh, being the normal and creating something new oh, I love, that's a great definition and a great aspect of innovation but you know it's not always going to be easy huh i really appreciate having you on here thank you uh, well, thank you. And just thank you for being here, sharing your insights. We have really had an enlightening conversation with Jay today. I have learned a lot. I, this was a nice dive into the world of digital marketing and exploring strategies and insights that have driven your success, but also you've given us some ideas that we can use within our own personal branding, within our own businesses. I'm thinking about things for innovation insights just from this conversation. Jay, your expertise in SEO and social media management and content creation has genuinely shown through and we value your perspectives in crafting compelling stories and marketing campaigns. Thank you for having me and listening. Oh, to our listeners, we hope that you have found this discussion as insightful and inspiring as I have. If you have any questions or want to learn more about Jay and his work, connect with him via his LinkedIn profile. Remember to subscribe to our podcast for more episodes featuring industry experts who are transforming business and marketing landscapes. So follow us on social media, visit our website for additional resources and information. 
And thank you again, Jay, for joining us and our audience. Thank you for listening. I am Dr. Yolanda Sanders. Until next time, keep innovating, keep dreaming, and keep making a difference.